take five. Now I gotta make this take take because I have to go to work. I'm your host, Jack Remington, the Jack Remington Political Analyst Channel. My original position, and I should have put this in the other video, but it was too long. I have a fake dollar, a one dollar bet with my son-in-law, and I just talked on the phone about an hour ago that he says that Joe Biden's gonna be the nominee, and I say he was not. I just felt that Joe Biden's health was, was not going to allow it. He would keep recovering and he would keep recovering. Now he's at the point of no return where he can't recover. At some point, there is no more recovery. He is what he is. And they can't hide it anymore. They, they got away with it for three and a half years. And if Joe Biden had done well or done anything other than what he did at that debate, none of these talks would be happening. There was a five-day delay for the Rasmussen poll, the Luntz Heritage, the Cato Institute. They give vacation days too. Now the numbers came in and it's the worst it's ever been for the Democrats. Good for me, but bad for them. Okay, they got Donald Trump trouncing Joe Biden now and decisively, if not trouncing Kamala Harris. Those two are not going to do. But the first step is we got to save the down ballot. We must save the Senate. That way we can impeach Trump in 2026 and, and, and hear me out, say this video. If they can save the Senate and maintain a majority in the Senate, 51 seats, even during a Republican presidency and Republican House control, the Senate makes the laws. They got the real teeth. Remember, the House of Representatives is the, is the truck stop. The Senate is the Coliseum, the country club with the kings and queens. They make the laws, folks. Those 100 senators have just about all the power in this country. I know you don't understand that. I know it's hard to take. I know you keep thinking, oh, the House can do the House can't do shit. They, they get up and they yak, 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 and they, yeah, they can present the bills, but the Senate's got to pass them. If the Senate doesn't pass them, they can get overridden by the president, and the Senate's got the power. You need to understand that. Those 100 senators, two from each state, well, the majority of the power in the government. The president's been turned into a popularity contest, and he's, he's just a transient figurehead that gets trapped, shopped around the world. He's the, the de facto leader of the free world. Okay, what, what can he really do? Okay, he can suspend habeas corpus, but you know what? After Abraham Lincoln did that in 1861, boy, Congress had a problem with that. And they, by the time Obama got elected president, they finally got away with the hostile comatist decision, where you, know, you have to have the majority of Congress, both houses, before you can suspend habeas corpus. But my original stance was, Joe Biden was not going to be the nominee. My son-in-law says, yes, he is. I made the video last week. I made the call that they want to stick with Joe Biden. But guess what? I've been reading between the lines, listening to Nancy Pelosi, Sean Hannity, Bill O'Reilly, Megyn Kelly, Untold Stories with uh, uh, Eric Hundley, Mark Rebay is the best show on television, Viva Fry is not a great show, the attorney Robert Barnes is not wrong on anything, the guy is so sharp, I can't believe Trump didn't hire this guy. Reading between the lines, I'm a retired NFL handicapper, and I'm going to tell you one true story, and this is why i got to retake this video, because I don't want to get sued by the quarterback, but in the late 1970s, they had a pretty good quarterback that I, that I cannot name, because I don't want to get sued. But he got caught in a gay bathhouse somewhere in Atlanta, Georgia, which I didn't think they would ever have in a million years. And it must have been a thousand feet underground. <laughs> the magma of the earth stay hidden. But they still got found out, and the owner wanted him benched. He wanted him traded, but the trade deadline was over. So now they got the second string guy who had never thrown a pass in the NFL, but he was shagging one of the coach's wives. <laughs> Well, the coach was at the practice, but the uh, coach came home early. He forgot something. He chased the quarterback around the house. When he got him in the garage, he locks him in the garage, and the Atlanta City Police comes, picks him up, and takes him away. Now, I don't remember the outcome anymore. But I do remember going to the bank. I took out $500. And I went to the local bookies, and whoever, they were, I think they were playing the 49ers, and they trounced the 49ers at Frisco. They were a 5-point underdog when, when, when the quarterback situation had. They were a 15-point underdog. They still took the Falcons. They didn't need a point to beat them. They won the game straight up. With a third string, nobody never threw the ball before. Okay, that's the NFL for you. I mean, you can't make that up. I mean, if you go through the uh, football reference manuals on, on Google, if you have one at your house, you can look up these games and look it up for yourself. Just look up the game where the Falcons beat the 49ers at Candlestick Park, which is a very rare occurrence, so you, you'll be able to figure out which game that was. I'm reading between the lines, and I just think that they have to replace Joe Biden. They don't want to. They know they've lost the presidency. They've, and I've talked about that at the other video as well, even though I still gave that one prediction. I'm going back to my original prediction. Joe Biden gets replaced, and it might even happen this weekend. That's so why I'm making a video now. For, so I don't go to work. I can't do it tomorrow. I can't do it Saturday. I'm so busy, and we all are. It's so really quick. I talk about the five people that are running the White House. But the chief is the de facto president right now. This is his third term. It's Barack Hussein Obama. He has four henchmen, what I call henchmen. The number two person is Ron Klain, Joe Biden's first chief of staff. He worked under Barack Obama's White House. I forgot the positions he had. He had a couple positions. Number three person is Jeff Seitz. He's the current Joe Biden chief of staff, and he's also very capable. The number four person is Michael Donilon. He's the chief White House strategist. He's a pretty good one, too. The fifth person is Vignette Riday. He's a speechwriter, screenwriter, 
that runs the media for Barack Hussein Obama. And it, now, each of them have between two and eight staffers. And I believe Barack Obama's got the most. He's got eight as far as what I was told. Okay. The other four people, they have either between two and eight. So I was told there's 30 people serve these five people. So you can figure out the math yourself. None of them were ever seen going to the White House unless it's an official invitation or a function. Like when Barack Obama went there for fundraise and meet Bill Clinton there and meet George Clooney and the lady from the pretty woman, uh, Julia Roberts, people like that. Now we know why Barack Hussein Obama bought that big mansion within walking distance of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, the White House. Because they got Wi-Fi. It's close enough where they can get the Wi-Fi connected there. So they don't have to leave Barack Hussein Obama's mansion. They just signal to the White House what they've decided. And now the mainstream media need to add this here and sneak this in here while I can, okay? Now they've turned on each other. Well, if you knew Joe Biden was like this, why didn't you say anything? Well, they all knew, okay? It's who can get the scoop first. That's what journalism is. The New York Times broke the story, or the Los Angeles Times broke the story, the Wall Street Journal got the scoop, TMZ got the scoop, and TMZ was the first one to get George Stephanopoulos. The ABC guy, who's Bill Clinton's right-hand man, Carville was the main strategist for Bill Clinton. Dick Morris was the main personal advisor, the number two person under Bill Clinton. Dick Morris is, is the Tom Brady of political analysts. You should listen to him sometime. He, he's on my lunch alerts. He gives these five-minute videos and they're great. He was Jerry Nadler's roommate for five years when they were going to school in New York City. And that's They're all from the same area of the country. And they're both Jewish and everything else. Dick Morris has seen the light. He saw what the Democratic Party has become and he left it. And when Hillary Clinton tried to get Dick Morris to work for her and he refused, that should be a fun video. And there was arguments and Hillary called him a Jew and all this other stuff. I should make a separate video about that. It's just pretty fun. It's just coming back to me. The main point is... Joe Biden's going to be replaced. They have to save the damn ballot. They have to save the Senate. Okay, they are so desperate to save the Senate. They're losing Joe Manchin, retiring. The Democrat West Virginia, red state, is probably going to be one pickup for Republicans just in that one state right there. And if they can somehow manage to squeeze, squeeze a couple people out of the Senate, the Senate J.D. Vance has moved up because his, his pro-life choice were a Republican in the state of, red state of Ohio. It's pretty telling. But Ohio's women, they, the Ohio, Kansas, West Virginia, these red states, they, the women came out of the midterms in droves, voted every Democrat for the House seats that they could because abortion is on the ballot. And Trump is on, he's right about this. He tells Republicans, don't talk about abortion. That's a losing issue. Why would you discuss it? But the Republicans, they don't listen to Trump either. They don't like, they, they don't want, they, they don't want Donald Trump either. So they need to say the Senate. Why? Why they need to say the Senate? Because those senators, those hundred senators, took me state. In my opinion, the majority of the power in this country, they make the laws and they can enforce the laws if necessary. The president is the executive branch. He's the, he's the executive officer, like in the military. And if there's an excursion or a disruption or a riot, or an executive officer calls up the national guard, hey, go shoot to kill or don't rubber bullets or tear gas or just stand and look dumb and whatever it is, the executive officer takes care of it. That that's your president. He's just the executive officer. And but we got Congress. House presents the bills and they can do all the committees and investigate. They have no real teeth. They can subpoena, but they can force you to come to court, could come to a hearing. So what? And they do have limited power to arrest you if you're in contempt of court. Like they did the Sharon McDougal when she wouldn't testify against Bill Clinton. She spent 18 months, as far as, as far as I'm concerned, she's the last person that ever spent, spent time in jail for contempt of Congress. And the most I could give you by statute is 18 months. She served 18 months because she did not want to testify against Hillary Clinton during the Whitewater thing. And I remember that too. But the Democrats didn't want to talk about that. I'm, 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 my son in law is not going to appreciate that part. She knew not to testify against Bill and Hillary, the Whitewater, and Vince Foster death, and everything else. What weapons does Barack Hussein Obama have to get Joe to step down? Okay, to save the down ballot, to save the Senate, and possibly save the House. If you're if you're a business and you have to decide. Do I pay the fine from the EPA or the IRS, or do I go to court and fight it? And even if win, lose, or draw, uh, we're going to spend X amount of dollars. Okay, it's a financial business decision, or they say, or to pay the victim off. Okay, companies and nonprofits—they've been doing this for, since our, our founding. Okay, it's a business decision only. No emotion. It's is it worth it to fight the CPA fine? Or do we give money to clean it up and still fight it? Or do we let them just make the deal with them? Okay, don't take us to court and we won't admit any, any liability, but we'll clean it up. Or do pay some victims. Aaron Brockovich is a great movie for you to watch for something like that, okay? And the government decided they were going to destroy this woman. They, they felt it was cheaper to destroy this woman. They thought it was easier when they found out, well, it wasn't easy. The rest is history. You need to watch that movie. And that's what this is here, I'm telling you. It's the easiest and cheapest route for them to get rid of Joe Biden. Because they can put up with Donald Trump just for four years. If they can save the Senate, it'll be gridlock. 
and nothing's going to happen for four years. Trump's going to spin his wheels, and it will set up the recession that Trump's going to be inheriting. And there was another big layoff announcement today. 1,500 more people in Orange County are getting the accident. Walmart's saying, I mean, the, the California's getting hit hard. California has 58 counties, with three of them. They're losing their McDonald's franchises this month of July of 2024. $20 an hour flipping burgers has destroyed them. California's got some real problems, and they're going to get rid of Kamala, too. I'm going to keep that in there. By rights, and I just had a phone call with a guy, the first guy, he's 20 years younger than me. He, he'll, he'll get there. He'll be better than me someday. You don't understand why Kamala Harris is going to get the majority of that money because it's, it's a ticket. It's a Biden-Harris ticket. Okay, 91 million she's going to get overnight if, if they go that route. But they don't want her either. She was in California saying that she might take a run. At, there's going to be empty uh, Senate seat. She's thinking about running for senator again. She was our senator once. And she might even be the favorite she comes out here and does that. It's a good place for her. That would be a great place for her. You know, I'm living in California. She's not going to affect my life, but they're going to feel pretty good about that decision. They're going to only put up for Trump for four years, stick him with this deep recession that's coming, and watch him spin his wheels and try to spin his way out of this. And they can, if they keep the Senate, they can impeach him again <laughs> in 2026 and, and look for, and save this video. In fact, if all this takes place, like I'm saying, if they can impeach Trump again in 2026, he'll resign. He'll quit. He'll have a health problem. And I'm, I'm 80 now, and I saw what Joe went through, and now I'm going to do the same. He's done, well, he raised all that money, got himself out of financial trouble, the little bind he's in. He, he's going to resign. I can smell it a mile away. And if you think about it, and, and if you can get the process the way I got it down, you'll, you'll see it too. He will have accomplished what he set out to do. Now, what weapons does Barack Hussein Obama have to get Joe Biden to quit? Well, he has to go through Jill, because she's the one that's going to cling to the bitter end. But see, but Jill, oh, no, no, don't, no, 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 she's so desperate. Now, they can't use the, the trope of, well, you know, Jill, if you don't talk Joe into stepping down, we're going to lock Hunter up. Well, she's going to give you about Hunter Biden. That's not her child. That's, that, that, that's not her seed. That's Joe Biden's child. Okay, that, that's her son-in-law. Okay, and she probably doesn't like him. If he was my son, I'd never talk to him. He wouldn't, he, he wouldn't be allowed in my house. And everybody knows that. Barack Hussein Obama is going to find a way to talk Jill to talking Joe and stepping down. Now, Joe will do anything that Jill tells him. So if Jill can tell him, you know, Joe, for the better of the country, let's do this, he will do it. Maybe Barack Obama will tell her, you know, we're going to lock Hunter up and tell Joe that he won't be able to pardon him. We're going to scare him or do something. You're going to find out about that China money, find out about the Ukraine money. You know, Trump was right about that phone call, the money for Ukraine that was held at that $6 million, whatever the hell it was. Remember all that? And Nancy Pelosi saved the day to impeach Donald Trump over that phone call? Well, if it all comes out again, here's the thing. The Supreme Court's going to rule in Trump's favor that it's up to the chief executive, the commander-in-chief, to decide funds for any foreign military. Not this Vindman, the Ukrainian-born uh, foreign national, that was given the job in the military. And he didn't decide foreign policy. The president does. And if that comes, see, the Supreme Court was giving us marching orders to drag this Trump thing out and let him get impeached. And they, it almost worked. I, I know it's a long video again, but I'm here to tell you. They are going to replace Joe Biden. That was my original stance. And I had this fake dollar, this fake Trump dollar, this monopoly money dollar. Just an imaginary fun bet for my son-in-law for bragging rights. And that was my original stance. And that's my proof. I should have stuck with that, but I didn't because I don't want Joe Biden staying in the race because I know Trump's going to trounce him. He could lose his, anyone, anyone other than Kamala Harris. And I already talked about what's going to happen if that were the problem. They'll come up with a plan for her to keep her from, you know, cackling. But another weapon that they have is, is the 25th Amendment. They could have, Kamala Harris has got to initiate it. She's got to invoke that, invoke that article, the 25th Amendment, and she needs two thirds of the cabinet members. Two thirds of the House and two thirds of the Senate, some kind of combination. There's got to be two thirds of all the bodies of Congress, and then she can certify this thing that he's not fit for office. I'm now the president. They could do that. I know she's thought about it. Okay, I don't think she's threatened anybody with it yet. But here's the thing: if they go that route and she goes against Barack Hussein Obama, guess what? What happens when you stab them in the back like that? Okay, we're talking about the Democrats now. They do it all the time, but they don't want it done to themselves. They really, they really take it personally. The only thing that Barack Hussein Obama is not going to get even Kamala Harris if she does that because they, they, they lose all three houses for sure. They will not be able to save the down ballot because the optics are going to look so bad that they had to do this. They, they couldn't talk Joe and Jill down reasonably. You know, if the Republicans got any savvy at all whatsoever, if they got any survival skills, they'd pounce on that <laughs> and like white on rice and just destroy the Democrats with that. They, they probably wouldn't do it because I know the Republicans we got today are a bunch of cowards. It's my video, my channel, I can say that, other than Donald Trump and Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates, But the rest of them, <laughs> that's your boy's a good one, but the rest of them, 
and mostly cowards. Oh, we don't hurt anybody's feelings. Well, you, and while you, you, you're not getting anybody's feelings hurt, you're getting voted out of your own country. Gavin Newsom's not going to run in 2028. That's why he's pushing Joe Biden. He's going to stick with Joe Biden. He knows that he could, he could probably lose if he run, runs up against Donald Trump. And that's why Gavin Newsom is trying to channel the policies here in California really quickly. So now he's going to, and he, he's out of office in two years now. He's termed out. But he'll be the clear favorite in 2028. And I told my son-in-law that when he, when I called him a couple of hours ago. So Gavin Newsom has got, has got resources at his disposal. He's got anti Nancy. He's got the pulse of the country. Kamala Harris has got nothing. That's, that's what's going to happen here. They're going to let Trump sneak in through the gate. You know, he'll do his four years, try to do his best to, to get us out of the recession. And, and I think he'll do it. But it's going to be some pain, but it won't be that much pain because he's gone after four years. That's why his vice presidential pick is so critical. At any time in our history, I think this is the most critical vice presidential pick of all time. When this Joe Biden thing is over, all eyes are on Trump. That's just the way it's going to be. I want Biden to stay, obviously, but for the better of the country, he's got the hands on the nuclear codes. And what if something really does come up and then he has to act fast he's got, and he's stammering. He doesn't know what to do. He's turning, you know, what are they going to do? The only one has got any, any chops at all is Obama. And coming come to an emergency, okay, what's Jill going to do? She's going to shit her pants. Not Obama. I'm telling you, don't underestimate Barack Hussein Obama. Okay, he's going to come up with a plan. He's going to find a way to talk Jill, talk Joe, and stepping down. That's how it's going to have to work. And it has to happen for the betterment of the country. Now, I think the country can get better with Trump in there. They're going to do everything they can to make, give him the hard, the worst head start of, of all. You know, this is in 2016 where he snuck up on him, okay? They know he's going to trounce this coming election, if it's a fair election. There'll be so many Trump voters coming in, they, they won't be able to counter me. I mean, I mean, you can't have 300 million voters in the election because people smell a rat at that point. I mean, there's not that many registered voters. There's only 335 citizens in the whole country. If you come up with 300 or 400 million votes, there's a problem. They know they can't do that this time. They're going to make the switch. Biden's going to get replaced. I'll, I'll, I'll go on a limb. It will not be Kamala Harris either. Or if it is, they know she's going to lose to Trump, too. And, and that could be a real gamble by Obama. But, okay, well, let's just sneak common here. Because the, cause the donors stopped giving money. Abigail Disney, uh, Reed Hoffman of LinkedIn, uh, George Clooney, uh, Robert De Niro. All They've all stopped donating. You, he, Joe, you got to go, you know. We love you, Joe, but you can't do the job. We got to get somebody that can beat Trump. See, they're so focused on hating Trump. They're not thinking a long-term game, but Obama is thinking a long-term game. He is thinking of all... The, the, the uh, possibilities and scenarios. And, and he already had a thought at last week, I'm sure. When you have leaks, these anonymous leaks, they're not really leaks per se. The press calls them that because they want you to make people do a deeper dive than what it really is and what it's intended for. But they're there for a purpose. It's there to, to get the uh, get, get the body politic moving and they even move it over to the window a little bit if they can. And they've done that they did it in 2022 with the abortion issue for the midterms and they're doing, they're doing it here. It's been leaked that uh, Joe Biden's had eight physicals, 16 total physicals, eight for Alzheimer's disease and uh, eight for Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease since February. So it's six months ago. So they, they've known for some time that that he, he's going to reach the point of no return. Why they let that leak? Well, it makes it easier if Kamala does not vote at 25th Amendment. And, and that still may happen. And she might be the president for a few months, whatever it is, the first female president, and get that out of the way. Okay, you have to remember... The Democrats made sure that they had the very first black female judge. George W. Bush was going to do it. I forgot the lady's name. She was a pretty good judge, too. They, they, they shot her nomination down. They, they didn't want a black female uh, feather in the cap on the Republican side. And, and, and George W. Bush had his finger in his nose and let him get away with it. I caught it. If I have time, I'll, I'll put the screenshot of that up there, too. But if not, I'll save it for another video. I'll make some notes. I hope I made this video clear, but Joe Biden will be replaced. And we'll see what it's going to be an open convention. We'll see what happens. Uh, I really don't think they'll do the 25th Amendment because of the optics and they're really gambling at that point. But if they have to, if Joe really doesn't, if Joe stands his ground and Jill stands her ground, then it's it's going to be ugly. I'll be loving it, but <laughs> my son-in-law won't be loving it. Always ready to be an American. Thank you. Stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.